Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very interesting segment. There is no crime that Trump has committed. So there's no, there's no crime. We can just read here. The New Yorker, this is by Jeffrey Tubin, CNN contributor, legal analyst. The debate about criminal, the criminality of the president's behavior with regard to Ukraine on some level will always remain a theoretical matter. Under the Department of Justice policy, sitting presidents cannot be indicted. That's not true. That's a memo that they don't have to abide by. Who cares what the policy is? The policy does not um, uh, overshadow or supersede federal and state laws. If Trump committed a crime, he committed a crime. So that's, that's nonsense. Mueller didn't indict Trump because he didn't find evidence of a crime. That's the point. He wrote the evidence was insufficient, but it's a bunch of nonsense. How could the evidence be insufficient for campaign finance violation, for anyone being a foreign agent, for anyone colluding with Russia, um, for anyone working to obtain emails? And they found no evidence of a wide-ranging plot. So there was no evidence of anything. The Steele dossier was purchased by Clinton. And then the FBI utilized it. It wasn't all, oh my goodness, well, it was just the evidence that we had. It was raw intelligence. No. It was a complete and utter setup. It's obvious. They would never allow they would never allow this if the tables were turned. But anyway, then he writes, impeachment and removal must always come first. No, that's not true. That's not true. Then why did they even have a, a Mueller probe? Why were there why were they talking about um, indicting Trump under 18 US Code 371? Jeffrey Tubin himself was saying that he Trump committed a crime and could and could be indicted. The difference between Trump and Clinton is that Clinton actually committed crimes, but Co but Comey covered them up. Trump did not. There's no underlying crime. He never worked with Russia, and he didn't leverage or strong arm the Ukraine. President Zelensky and Poroshenko both state. President Zelensky and his predecessor, President Poroshenko, both state. This is in the Los Angeles Times. This is all over. Uh, CNBC, New York Times. You could say. Or the Washington Post. Here, just look. He was not pressured. Zelensky felt no pressure. Where's the crime? If the the Democrats are going to impeach Trump, it really doesn't matter. But L.A. Times, Ukrainian leader Zelensky felt um, no pressure. Here. Zelensky felt Washington Times. Zelensky felt no pressure from Trump on on, on a controversial call. Okay, Ukraine's pro, uh, interview. L.A. Times. Ukraine's Poroshenko said he felt no pressure from Trump. Okay, uh, uh, AFP news agency. No pressure. Say both Trump and Zelensky on their on the, on their call uh, convers, uh, co controversial call. CNN. Ukrainian president felt uh, no pressure. Okay. No pressure, say both um, Ukrainian President Zelensky and Fox Business. Nobody pushed me. Trump and President of Ukraine say there was no pressure. NBC News. Ukraine's Poroshenko says he felt no pressure from Trump. LA Times. Wall Street Journal. Ukra Ukrainian President denies Trump pressured him during call. The week, Ukraine president on Trump phone call. There was no pressure. Time magazine, Ukrainian, Ukrainian president Zelensky denies Trump pressured him. CNN. So, so okay, there was no pressure. You know that song, Under Pressure by Queen? This is Under No Pressure by Trump and Democrats. And the issue here is that they're going to, look, they are speaking on behalf of the Ukraine. Just like Biden forced the Ukraine to fire a prosecutor. They are speaking on behalf of other people saying, these people feel a certain way. And we have this uh, lieutenant colonel and we have this person uh, who is really an intelligence operative. And, and they're, they're speaking truth to power. And, you know, well, where's the evidence of an actual crime? 
There is none. So if you finish with the, if you continue with the Jeffrey Tubin article, um, the debate about criminality, the president's behavior with regard to Ukraine on some level will always remain theoretical matter. It will remain theoretical because there was no crime committed. There was, the only issue was Democrats have to, they live in a paradigm where everything revolves around their electoral chances. Everything. They have convinced themselves that Trump worked with Russia even though he didn't. They have convinced themselves that Trump, that Russia interfered in the election even though it didn't. I don't care if the Kremlin purchased Facebook ads or if they didn't purchase Facebook, Facebook ads. And there's no evidence that Putin ordered any interference because they, he feared Hillary Clinton. Really? He has the goods on Bill Clinton. Half a million dollar speaking engagement. This is in the New York Times. Everything is conspiratorial to Democrats. Because if they don't, if they don't believe it, then it's if if it hurts their narrative. Oh yeah, this is a ridiculous fantasy. Cash flowed to Clinton Foundation amid Russian uranium deal. They got twenty percent of U.S. uranium capacity. Do you think that they care? Do you think that they're frightened of Clinton? They are not frightened of Clinton at all. They never were, and they never will be. The whole thing is absolute and utter nonsense. Complete and utter nonsense. But again, um, if you finish the article, it's... But the president and his supporters have already started making the argument that he should not be impeached because there's no proof of an underlying crime. The provisions of, of the Hobbes Act show that Trump may be wrong, may be wrong about that. Okay, so then he goes on, he talks about, well, he could have done this, could have done that, da 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 da, -da. There's this one law... Um, in 1946, the Hobbes Act. Okay, so, again, he didn't commit any crime. Even at the end of this article, it's all theoretical. They're trying to, they would never treat any other president in this manner. Zelensky, when people say, well, you know, uh, Trump committed, Trump tried to pressure them. He, there was no pressure within the, within the, um, the conversation. Even Zelensky states that. Even Poroshenko states that. The quid pro quo, the actual, like, if you do not do this, you will not get the money, is Biden. That is not, that's on video. So they, they can't, there's nothing that they can say. There's nothing that they can say regarding uh, Biden's actual comments. Because they speak for themselves. Biden's comments speak for themselves. There is no crime. They tried to say that Trump engaged in the eight, uh, violated 18 U.S. Code 371. That's what they tried to say. Well, there's no crime called collusion, but there is if you defraud the U.S. government. That's actually the crime that um, they committed. Comey, Strzok, McCabe, Clapper, Brennan, all of them. And I explained that in The Federalist below in the pinned comment and in the description. The article is there. That's my article in The Federalist. One of my articles explaining how all of them engaged in criminal behavior. And the, the notion that, well, Trump can't be indicted, then why did you have a special counsel? Why didn't, why didn't um, the House... Because Democrats, um, the Republicans in, in, in the 90s with Clinton, they actually had at least a resolution saying that um, we're going to impeach, we're going to impeach based on obstruction of justice and perjury with Clinton. But they didn't even do that to Trump. And then they fall back. They found nothing, so they spend three years. They find nothing. Then they say, "Well, there's a Justice Department memo." Then why didn't you, why didn't you bring it up before you started a special counsel? He didn't commit a crime then. There was no crime here. You're going to impeach anyway. It doesn't matter. Look, this is an this is a this is an example of. Democrats have nothing. They're not running on Medicare for all. They're not running on a Green New Deal. They're not running on abolishing ICE. They're not running on any of these manipulative, deceptive, conniving, disingenuous, duplicitous tactics that they utilize. They rely on idealistic, good people to manipulate 
to just say, look, you know what? You might not you might not think that Trump worked with Russia. And you might not think that, you know, Comey, Clapper, Brennan, Strzok, McCabe, all of them are good people. And you might not think that he actually committed a crime with Ukraine. And you might not think this and you might not think that. But we're going to engage in the most horrendous behavior. <coughs> we're going to engage in the most horrendous behavior. And we're going to uh, try everything possible to remove Trump and then we're going to say that that Trump is causing divisiveness. Then we're going to say we're going to we're going to um, overreact and exaggerate and embellish and create this world around Trump's tweets and his personality. And oh my God, he's an authoritarian. He's doing this and that. And the fabric of our nation is being torn apart. This is a temper tantrum. You're like you're like uh, the Democrats are like children with a temper tantrum. This is not like there's nothing here that's a criminal offense. It is a phone conversation. They went from working with Russia to buy Facebook ads to a phone conversation. This is the type of thing you would see in a mental institution where, like, you know, like people like believe things and like they're talking to themselves. And this is the type of thing that you would see. And, um, like, this is not absolutely not reality a phone conversation and facebook ads has have nothing to do with u.s national security we are completely asleep at, at the wheel as a, as a country we are completely asleep at the wheel and democrats are going to lose again clinton's going to run again they're going to impeach trump because they have to pave the way for clinton clinton 2020 is like a it's like a runway full of gravel and, and rocks and boulders and and shrubs and trees. And they have to level all of it. They've been trying to level the whole thing. It's still it still ain't smooth. It's, it's like, what do we what do we need to do? We got steamrollers, everything. We try to do the asphalt and everything's not working. There's no way that you can just it's not humanly possible to make things morally relative for the golden mumu because she's that horrendous. And when she runs again, from the moment I said that Clinton couldn't win in 2015 until the until 2020, I will have been right on my philosophy regarding the people who run the Democratic Party. It's not a big deal. I don't have any like I don't I don't hate Hillary Clinton. I don't I don't, I don't, I don't dislike or have any contempt for Bill or Hillary. I don't. They just happen to be. Well, the Golden Moo Moo happens to be a walking criminal. So, which and she runs the and they run the Democratic Party. It's a political machine. There was never a this this primary was even more rigged than the last one. There, the Democratic primary. Cheated Bernie, the Democrats cheated Bernie Sanders in 2016. They got Bernie to say that it was Russia. They have not focused on any major policies. They've tried to simply remove Trump because of a, a ridiculous, absurd investigation. They got a special counsel out of it. Now they're going to impeach Trump on a phone conversation. They create their own reality. And when reality comes crashing down, they then blame everyone but themselves. And then it's people like H.A. Badman that, oh, my God, you know, you know, oh, these people are really horrible because they, did, they, they got off the sinking ship and they realized there was no, um, the morality was not there. You have people on social media who focus their entire lives. Every day they get on, they get a rush from it. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to totally show how I'm more moral, I'm morally superior than that person. And it's always... The left versus the left. Do you think conservatives or Trump supporters or independents or people who used to be progressive, you think they care about the disdain of people on the left? They don't care. I don't have Twitter. I don't have social media. I don't have Facebook. Because it's just a little, like, it's like an alternate reality run by people who will eventually vote Clinton. Like I said, Clinton 2020 is a reality. Get ready for eight years of Trump. That's below in the pinned comment. 
posts below in the pinned comment. So, give me your thoughts. Um, check out H.A. Goodman's other channel right now. I'm ramping it up. November is going to be an amazing month, people. November is going to be an amazing month. Mark my words. Amazing for a whole lot of things. Clinton's running again. I don't care if she runs. To, I don't care if she announces tomorrow officially or a week before Super Tuesday. There is no. There are no rules in the Democratic primary or Democrats. Democrats run by one rule. Whatever, whatever they can do to install Clinton. That's it. Give me your thoughts below. Check out H.A. Goodman's other channel right now if you want to support my voice. My Patreon is below. They're going to impeach Trump. There's no underlying crime. They don't care. They don't care. This is not national security. It's a conversation where they they get into Trump's mind. Well, why did the Clinton Foundation accept so much money from people who wanted beneficial treatment? Why did that beneficial treatment take place all the time? UBS, Boeing, uh, weapons deals. Um, you can go on forever. Haiti, Uranium One. You can't make that correlation, but you have to make correlations with Trump all the time without any, um, without the standard of proof that you uh, conveniently, conveniently ignore with Clinton, where, who, where the crimes are actually there. Oh, she used servers for convenience? That makes no sense. Not convenient, number one. And how do you transfer top secret and special access program intelligence outside of the United States government? That's inherently illegal. On servers that that theoretically nobody has access to that President Obama didn't even know of. How does President Obama not know his own Secretary of State has servers for four years running outside the U.S. government? How do you not know this? Of course he knew. Give me your thoughts below. Thank you.